morning, another day, another real world test. Today we're doing on the Apple iPhone 14 Pro Max and we're in a sort of unique neighborhood called Morningside Heights, which is pretty far north in Manhattan, the borough and the island of the same name. I haven't been here in a long time. So I figured, you know, we'd explore like we usually do while we test out the iPhone. But first things first. Coffee, check. And I said this neighborhood was unique. And that's because it's basically a college town within New York City. It's home to a number of universities, but the vast majority of it is home to one very famous university, Columbia University. One of the original eight Ivy League schools in the Northeastern United States, and one of the seven of those that are colonial colleges, or schools that were built before the American Revolutionary War. Columbia being one of those, and originally called King's College, until you know after that war when it wasn't that cool to be associated with the King of England. At that point, it got the name Columbia. Right now, we're in one of the most popular coffee shops on campus, Joe Coffee. Now, it's a local chain here in New York City, but this location is in the creatively named Northwest Corner Building, located at the Northwest Corner of campus. Now, while we're here, let's talk about the design of the new Apple iPhone 14 Pro Max. And right away, I apologize if you've seen my iPhone 14 Pro video. There's gonna be some overlap. They're very similar. Now, compared to the iPhone 13 Pro Max, the design is well, it's very similar. You'd actually have a hard time telling the difference between these two devices from behind, at least. We have that same matte glass on the back that I've always liked and think feels more premium than, say, the glossy one on the non-pro models. And we have the same stainless steel frame with flat sides. Now, the colors this year are gold, silver, deep purple, and space black, which is what I have here. Now, even though people have been giving the deep purple flack online for not being purple enough and being gray in certain lights, which it does, I happen to personally like that it's a subtle purple. And I have the 14 Pro in that color here. And you can check out the link below for my real test on the iPhone 14 Pro. Now for this model, I went with space black just to be different. And it is a different color than the graphite from last year, actually. It's more of like a matte black, which I also kind of like. Now, regardless of the color you choose, though, you probably want to protect it and keep it looking new. So you might want to use today's sponsor, Casetify. For the newest iPhone 14 bounce case series, they engineered an X design with embedded EcoShock technology to provide extra drop cushioning on the back plate for the ultimate 360 protection. And because of this, their bounce case series has drop protection up to 21.3 feet and six times the military spec standard. The bounce corners were actually inspired by Air Max sneaker culture and provide added rigidity to the case and has been dropped 156 times to ensure that the protection doesn't wear off. And lastly, they do all of this in a super thin case, which I always appreciate, and it's made from 65% recycled and plant-based materials, and are even partially made from upcycled phone cases. So it's a case made from cases. Very meta. They also have prints and artist collabs, as well as a custom builder that you can use online, and they have a built-in MagSafe magnet to ensure that they work well with all of your MagSafe accessories. If you wanna check out their cases, head to the link in the description below, and thanks again to Casefy for sponsoring this video. Okay. Let's get out of here, because there's something I heard about here on campus that I want to try to find. Welcome to the infamous tunnels under Columbia University. And it's actually pretty extensive. Now, it's usually used for conduits for steam, cables, and other infrastructure, but they were originally built well before Columbia was here, back when all this land was the Bloomingdale Insane Asylum. It was used to transport patients between the buildings, apparently. Now, they also then played a role during the Manhattan Project when Columbia was here. The Manhattan Project, if you didn't know, is the US, UK, and Canada's research and development undertaking during World War II to produce the first atomic bomb. And with scientists here at Columbia that were racing to split the atom before the Germans did. And they were the first to split a uranium atom using a particle accelerator here under Pupin Hall. Now, most recently, as in like the 50s and onward, students were actually using them to get to class even, until a lot of them were eventually shut down. Now, despite this, there are still a lot of them that are publicly accessible, apparently. And they've even been mapped pretty extensively by students throughout the years. The 
display on the iPhone 14 Pro Max is still 6.7 inches, but it has thinner bezels by just like a tiny bit, which is, I guess, always nice. And it can get up to 2,000 nits of peak brightness in outdoor lighting and 1,600 for HDR content compared to the 1,200 nits for the 13 Pro Max. And honestly, that was never really an issue for me. The brightness, even on the old phones, was plenty enough for me to see it in broad daylight. But now you can tell it's even brighter, which is, you know, Always good, I guess. Now, the display is also 120 hertz, but unlike the iPhone 13 Pro Max, it can drop down to 1 hertz or refresh the image on the screen once a second instead of the 10 hertz or 10 times a second of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And this, according to Apple, is why they can finally do an always on display. Now, display here clocks itself down to 1 hertz and just gets dimmer. So it's actually like always on. It's not a separate display like it is in some other devices. Now, this always on display apparently annoys some people because it's too bright. But I honestly like it. I actually think it's kind of clever. I think it's a better use of an always-on display than what we normally have, where it's just like an icon. This at least gives you more information. It will, however, turn completely off if you have it in sleep focus mode, which is what I do when I put it next to my bed when I'm going to sleep. Or if you put it obviously in a bag or a pocket and it's too dark and it knows you're not looking at it anyway. It can also automatically guess the subject of the lock screen photo, so long as you have something that stands out like a face or something that clearly has a foreground and a background, and it'll put the clock behind what it thinks the foreground or the subject is. You can also put widgets on this lock screen, but if you do that, you lose that like depth effect where it puts the clock behind the subject. But all in all, I think it's kind of clever, honestly. So the other thing you'll notice about this screen that looks different from the old model is the notch is not quite a notch anymore, technically. Let's talk about the very polarizing dynamic island as Apple calls it. So the cutout they have now is nice. I personally think it looks a bit better than the notch, but the reason you've undoubtedly heard of it is because of the UI UX changes that Apple has kind of created around the cutout. So a ton of notifications now use the island and expand from it or pull down from it instead of it coming from the very top of the screen. There's also background activities that use the island as well, like music when you swipe away, it absorbs into the island and will show waveforms and album art. Timers that are going do the same with showing you the time remaining, screen recordings, incoming and duration of calls, etc. And you can also tap and hold on it during one of the supported background activities to get a few controls for that activity without having to open it or you can tap on it to jump back to that app. It'll also take the two latest supported activities at once with the second one being a floating icon to the right of the island. And you can tap and hold on either of them to get the controls like normal or tap on them to get back to those apps. Now, once you open a third, it'll remove the one that was opened the earliest. And honestly, I know it's a small thing, but it does take the cutout and at least incorporate it into the experience. And that subtle thing kind of changes your mentality with it. It honestly just feels less intrusive. It feels like it almost kind of quote unquote serves a purpose. And honestly, after using the phone for a bit, I like it. It is very pretty here. And it is hard to remember that you're in the middle of New York City. I should have went here. There's no way I was getting here. Welcome to the iconic image of Columbia that was built between 1896 and 1897 and is a National Historic Monument, actually, the Lowe Memorial Library, often called the Lowe Library now. Fun fact, it's not a library anymore. Very confusing to new students, I'm sure but it hasn't been a library since 1934, when the larger Butler Library was built across the plaza. Instead, now it's become the like central administration building for Columbia University. And actually when it was built, it housed 700,000 books and they had to then move them from here to Butler over there. Apparently they used a slide-like system. Now because of the symbolism of this building and this courtyard and how it kind of represents Columbia itself, it's been the site of a lot of protests. The most famous of which was the Columbia University protests of 1968, where students actually occupied the Lowe Library, and some say they used the tunnels we found earlier to get in and out of it, but they were protesting a potential segregated gymnasium that was going to be built nearby, as well as the Vietnam War at the time. Now eventually the president of the school at the time met with the students finally, and they came to an agreement and ended the protest. And while we're here, let's talk about the cameras on the new iPhone 14 Pro Max. One of the big headline things that Apple said about the camera here is that they're now using a 48 megapixel camera instead of the 12 that they used to for the main camera. The more exciting thing really though is the fact that it is a larger sensor. It is a 1 by 1.28 inch instead of a 1 by 1.7 inch. And by default, it's going to bin those pixels, something we've seen a lot of manufacturers do. But essentially what will happen is it'll take sets of four pixels and combine them into one larger pixel. So the 48 megapixel 
megapixels of 1.22 micron size pixels will become a 12 megapixel set of 2.44 micron size pixels. The idea is that the larger the pixel size, the more light it can let in and the better the low light performance and dynamic range that we should get. And that plus their new photonic engine, they call it, which is essentially just the new image processing pipeline where they process the image during the raw format instead of waiting for it to be converted into RGB and doing their you know, processing then. Long story short, according to Apple, it'll give you two times better low light on the main camera. Also something interesting to note, the main camera is two millimeter equivalents wider than the old model, which you can see in photos side by side. And we also have a new ultra wide camera that is a 12 megapixel camera, but it is a one by 2.55 inch instead of a one by 3.4 inch. So even though they have the same amount of megapixels, they will be larger pixels. And again, better low light, better dynamic range in theory. Now we also have a new button in the viewfinder on the camera for two times. Now there isn't an extra lens, but what they're doing is they're essentially cropping out 12 megapixels from the center of the 48 megapixel main camera. And in doing so, they are technically optically getting a two times zoom. And honestly, it works well enough. And I like the fact that I have very quick access to four different focal lengths in the viewfinder. Speaking of that fourth focal length is our same essentially three times telephoto sensor, which is a one by 3.4 inch, one micron sensor that we had on the last model. Now, something I noticed more for video even than the photos is the low light performance of the video feels better to me than last year by a bit. Now, besides that, we also have 4K cinematic mode now instead of 1080p. And that's the mode that is meant to kind of do portrait mode video. It's meant to mimic a larger sensor with a faster aperture. So you get more bokeh in the image that you're shooting, which is like the blurred out either in the foreground or background around the subject. You can also change the amount of blur that you get after the fact as well. And I will say on the lower end there, it, it looks pretty fake. It doesn't look good. But if you do it kind of higher up, like F6, F7, depending on what you're looking at, you might need a higher number, but it does an okay job. I still personally prefer just using the regular main camera in the regular mode because these larger sensors do have a decent amount of natural bokeh. And, and that's good enough for me personally. Besides that, we also have action mode, which is a stabilization mode, but it does some extra electronic stabilization in order to mimic, say, like a GoPro or an ultra steady mode on an action camera. We also have an improved selfie camera. It's a 12 megapixel with an f1.9 aperture, and a lot of people online are saying it's better, and that's probably because of the faster lens and the shallower depth of field, but I agree, it does seem better. Okay, calling it a night, actually. Another thing I wanna talk about real quick uh, before we end this is the fact that none of the US models have a SIM card tray. They are eSIM only. If you don't know what that is, it's an electronic SIM. It's basically you download it from your carrier or through Apple's own program or setup process on the phone. And that's how you switch carriers or set up the phone for cellular service in the first place. Now, as a person who switches phones a lot because of my job, that's annoying because I can't just take the SIM card out and put it into another phone like I normally would. Obviously, that is very much a me problem and not a you problem. The you problem, though, I think will happen if you travel overseas with one of these phones because generally speaking, you would normally, to save money, go grab a SIM card from a carrier in the country you were visiting. Say you went to Germany or Italy or whatever, you would find a carrier there, put that carrier's SIM card in your phone and you get much cheaper data on their network versus trying to roam on a US carrier over there. And sometimes it's, it's a lot of money, the difference really. And so now you can't do that as easily. You can, however, go use an eSIM from one of those companies, but it's not really that prevalent like it is here in the States. And it doesn't mean you can't find it, but you know, it, it's gonna be harder at least for now. Now, of course, as with a lot of things Apple does with this kind of stuff, it will probably push more people to use eSIM. More carriers will want to use it now, at least in the States at first. And so, yes, overall, that is a good thing for the industry as a whole. Is it something we should probably move to anyway? But in the meantime, just expect a little bit of hiccups. Again, only if you have a US version. Now, let's talk about the battery life. The phone did die while I was out here, and here's my screen on time of my usage for anyone who's curious about that. Now, keep in mind, this was a not normal day. It was a real-world test. I filmed a ton on the phone. I took a ton of photos. But here is another day that was not a real-world test, so you have something to compare it to. 
Also, keep in mind with how Apple likes to show 24 hours of screen on time, you need to subtract the screen on time from the night before to get a more accurate number here. Now I will say, as far as battery life is concerned, I mean the 14 Pro Max here obviously is better than the 14 Pro, but it feels worse than the 13 Pro Max did, at least to me, and it seems like there's other people on the internet also testing out these phones saying something similar. Now, I thought maybe that had something to do with the always on display. So here is another day that was not a real test where I turned that off. And the truth is, is it, it, it means saved a little bit of power, but not enough for me to turn off the always on display. And so I can only think it's just something to do with iOS 16 or the phones, and maybe Apple will fix it down the road. And it's not like they have the worst battery life. They're just, they're just not as good as they were. But I don't know, other than the battery life situation, which hopefully, hopefully they'll fix, I don't know, who knows, but hopefully, it does feel like it has a decent amount of upgrades over the last year's model, at least in practice when you use it. Is it worth upgrading from the last year model to this one? Probably not, but it's usually never the case for that. Like, you always wanna wait probably two models before it becomes more pertinent to upgrade at least. But there guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think about the new iPhone 14 Pro Max in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. I will, as always, leave links below to the best prices that I could find on this phone. But if you like this video, please subscribe and ding the bell next to the word subscribe so you can get notified when I do new videos and you can come explore with me other places with other devices. And now for me to take the long trip home. Night. New scientist. Truck. So many planes. I still don't understand that sound backing up. Every single truck needs to make that sound. <sighs> it stops. I hit record again and it starts back up. Huh? Maybe it's done now? Has he backed up enough? He's doing like a 17 point turn. This has annoyed. Motorcycle, truck, car, I don't know what it is. Bus. Another bus, just driving through campus. And it's plane, very tiny prop plane, echoing the sound off of all of these very old buildings, relatively old buildings, everybody in Europe. Yeah, we get it, you're old. Ho, 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 bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do, what you gonna do when they come for you? I'm on a collegiate campus and there's motorcycles, there's helicopters, there's planes. Still New York City, confirmed. Planes at night. Can't escape them. Her outfit slayed. It's cute, it's a cute cardigan. It's fun in this courtyard when you have sounds like sirens because it echoes off all the buildings. <laughs> Making it worse. Now, Truck.